Hello everyone and welcome to the Guide Dog Lifestyle. My name is Odie Lofton. Glad you could join us again for our very first actual video. We hope that you guys watched our welcome video so you know what we're all about here. Uh, this is of course Philbin, Philbin the Guide Dog. And uh, we're going to show you in today's video about what it means for the guide dog with their equipment. What all does that include and how do we put it on the dog and what purpose does it serve while he's working. All right, well, we're going to get right to it. We don't want to make these videos very long or as any longer than they have to. We know you're very busy, so let's get to it. All right, well, you can't see my face now, but we have Philbin's tub. But the most important thing is you can see Philbin. So we definitely want you to be able to see Philbin. I'm going to slide this out of the way. Philbin, can you stand? Now, Philbin is about 25 inches at the hips. He is uh, weighs about 170 pounds. Not 170. I weigh 170. <laughs> 70 pounds. <laughs> Thank you, Raven. Raven's behind the scenes with the camera right now. She's my producer. She can't even make sure that my facts, that'd be bad, 170 Labrador, pound Labrador. Uh, anyway, okay. So let's just get right into it, folks. Uh, first up, we have Philbin's harness. This is the most obvious uh, piece of equipment that you'll see on the guide dog. Uh, let's go over the different parts. This top part here is the handle. This also um, is basically what I hold on to. It's shaped, let's see if I can get it. If you look at it, it's shaped so that it's ergo. So when you see it, it's actually slanted. That's to make it easier for me when I'm walking with Philbin so that he can, um, you know, basically be more comfortable for him and me so that my elbow's not, you know, sticking out like this. Um, I also have a little sign that says, please don't pet working dog. And I do that because I really want you to ask me first because it's very important while Philbin's working that you don't pet him unless you ask. Um, Below that, we have where it joints in. This part actually detaches, so does the other one, and it actually uses, you probably won't be able to see it, but there's a little point, little push pressure thing right here, and uh, basically this just snaps into it. This is made out of a combination of leather, plastic, and metal. Uh, these are imported specially for Guide Dogs for the Blind. They cost about $300 actually and they're measured specifically to fit me and the dog. So Philbin is very used to wearing this. I will now demonstrate in how we actually harness the dogs. So it's actually very easy. Uh, it's just actually a loop around so we just put around like kind of like a collar like you would do a collar for a dog. And um, we're going to have Philbin kind of move here. This part right here is actually the girth strap. So what this is going to do is it's going to tuck underneath Philbin. And I'm going to have to spin him around again. Sorry, pup. I know I'm toiling with you. So you see this right here. This part just snaps in like a little buckle snap. Boom. Like that. We want the harness to fit snug on the dog, but not too tight. We want them to be comfortable. So keep it even, keep it straight, just like this. And then the handle, just like that, and that's how I hold it. It's a single strap snap, makes it easier to get on the dog and get off the dog. So then to undo it, we just undo the strap, and it comes off like that. Now when you're first learning to do it, they tell you when you put it on the dog that you want to have it kind of like this. You actually want to hold this, the girth strap folded over so it doesn't get tangled up with the dog. So we got that. Uh, we have his tub full of all of his other toys and stuff. But the other cool thing, now some of the stuff I'm not going to put on Philbin, but I will show it to you just because of the factor. This would be his raincoat. It slides on like you would think like the harness would, just lays on his back and then it has a girth strap that goes underneath his belly. Um, we get all this stuff from Guide Dogs for the Blind themselves, and basically that. We have booties for Philbin. These are made by a company called Roughwear, and um, basically he loves these things. He loves to sniff them. He has a shoe fetish, but honestly when it comes to wearing them, he really doesn't like it. 
Um, but these just slip on his paws and they're a Velcro strap. They're great in the winter time when it's icy and they put salt down. Uh, they're great in the summertime when the pavement gets really, really hot. Uh, so that it really helps Philbin so get traction in the winter and also so the salt grind on the roads that they put down because the snow doesn't hurt him and then his paws don't burn up on the hot pavement when we're walking in the summer. Um, let's see here. What else can I show you guys? We also have, of course, just his regular collar. I usually have two collars on Philbin and you can see right here we have a chain collar uh, they're all they're slip collars. With a guide dog, we really want to use a slip because if Philbin does something wrong, he knows this sound. I bet you can you hear that when he knows that. See how his head kind of went down because he thinks he's kind of done something wrong. They know the sound before they even feel the correction. It's kind of the cool thing about dogs. They really want to please us, so they don't want to do anything wrong. It's just sometimes they you know inadvertently do stuff wrong. Um, but um, Philbin, you're a good boy. Yeah, I was just showing people. I know. So, but basically the other thing is I have a nylon slip collar. This is what I actually use. This has all of his tags and rabies tags, his guide dog's cat, guide dog tags and stuff like that. Uh, but the other thing is, is we have his doggy goo. I always, I can never get enough of telling people how great doggy goo is and how good it is for his allergies. We have a little special thing that we're still doing for you guys. We'll have a very end segment, so stick around for that. Uh, but of course, just like any collar you put on a dog, this is a slip. So the same thing, only this one doesn't make noise. But Phil, I've had Philbin so long that I really don't need it to make noise. This is just to make it easier for him. And then I take it off when we're at home because as you can tell, it's very loud. And I don't really want to hear this up and down the hall in our house. So, so it just slips on him like that. And uh, we'll turn him around. Sorry, pup. Um, and then just goes like that, and then I can clip. I have several options to clip him. Uh, next up, we have our gentle leader. This goes around his snout. It slips through. You have to be very careful when you measure this. It has a little uh, clamp that comes undone. You can tighten and loosen it. We want this to fit on the dog. And now this, and like some of the collars and stuff, you can use on any dog. Okay, so the only thing that's really specific to guide dogs that we've covered is the harness, obviously. Uh, so all the stuff you can actually use for your own pet, and that would actually be our pet tip, is to use something like this if your dog gets real sniffy or you have a lot of distractions when you're walking the dog and you want to promote better healing technique, use this and you get control of the head and the rest of the body will follow. So to put this on the dog, we're going to put this part over his snout and then we're going to take this, this is just a buckle, and we're going to put it around his head. Now we want this to fit not tight, um, but not real loose either, just snug. So this part needs to go, here Philbin, this part needs to go right behind his ears. So we want this kind of up high. Uh, and then the other part is the part that goes on his snout. We want to be loose enough to go to the tip of his nose, but to not obviously be able to come off. So this is actually fitting very perfectly right now. Um, so basically he's used to wearing this and then th it has a little loophole down here. I hope you can see that um, where my hand is down there. Um, I'm, we, it's kind of awkward for me looking at myself on my little TV screen here trying to make sure I get this in the shot. Um, but this is where your leash is going to clip to when you use this. Uh, you'd never want to clip your leash to more than one loophole on a collar. It's just one. Um, some people would say that you can do it to like the slip collar and there. We used to be trained to do that. But I find personally, it doesn't make a difference. I honestly, you get the same amount of control, the same amount of behavior. And plus I think it's more comfortable for the dog to be able to just have one. Um, now because of that sound that the dogs know, I can see where you may want to do it at first uh, if you're getting guide dogs. But of course, if you're an actual prospective student, Please do whatever the trainers tell you at the schools. I'm just simply telling everyone and kind of getting people introduced to what a guide dog is and what the guide dog lifestyle is. But any of this stuff, any techniques that I'm using, you definitely want to consult a professional trainer. I do not have the certifications. I'm just a handler who loves dogs and wants to share the story about Philbin and really educate the public as far as what a guide dog is and what it means to have a guide dog. So in this segment, we're covering the equipment. So I'm just talking about what I do. 
Now, I'm not saying go out and do everything I do necessarily. Now, there's some practical things that I find that work and I'm happy to share them. But honestly, if you're really seriously thinking about a guide dog or training a dog to be a service dog, consult a professional trainer. YouTube is not a very good place to get professional advice. There's nothing like getting a trainer. Anyway, continuing on. Uh, now that we have all of Philbin's head collar equipment on, uh, we don't need the booties because it's not real hot outside today, and we don't need the raincoat because it's sunny and about 80 degrees. So, uh, at this point, we would just hook his, get his harness back, and we're going to put that on him as we showed you earlier in the video. We clip it in. There's that. Make sure that it's tucked nice here underneath his belly. Everything's centered. I'm gonna make sure his collars are out. And then one, la the last piece of equipment. Now this is a special leash that probably is more designed for people with guide dogs. Um, it's actually a multi-length leash. Obviously you have your big clip part right here. Oh, I need to lower that. Uh, big clip part right here. That's the part you clip to there. This is what we call the adjuster. Um, this can unclip from the loops. And then this is what we would call a short leash. And if you're doing obedience training with your dog, you would actually, if you'll find on the upper part, there's another loop. And then that's what we clip to there. So you, then you get a longer leash. But when we work the dogs, we always typically use a short leash. So we clip that. And then as I mentioned before, we want to clip this to the gentle leader. And we're going to make sure everything's nice. We stand up, Ow. and then we're going to have Philbin heal, and he is in perfect healing position. I grab the harness, make sure my feet are even with his feet, and then I give him the command, or not the command, but the, well, we, we, we have different things that we do, either commands or we have guide work. Uh, things that we technically ask the dog, we typically would ask them to do it, but because the dogs are trained in something called intelligent disobedience, which I'll cover in a different video, we just ask the dogs to go forward. And then if they don't listen to us, then we reassess the situation. Um, so we do have different type of um, training words that we use with the dogs. So in this case, I'm just gonna tell Philbin, Philbin, forward. And because he's not gonna pull me to the Chair, he's gonna pull me out here. Thank you guys so much, and I uh, hope I can help you guys out. But you, Ugh. come here, Pop. Everyone wants to see you. So everyone, thank Philbin. He was a great person today. He's a great dog, and I wouldn't trade one day without him. So uh, we hope to see you guys next week, and stay tuned. Next, we have our doggy goo promo code that we want to tell you guys about. Stay tuned. Thanks. Bye-bye. Hi, this is Odie Lofton, owner of the Doggy Goo Review, which is part of LoftonSpace.com. I'm legally blind, and I've been using Doggy Goo with my guide dog, Philbin, for some time now. And I have to say, it's worked wonders. Not only has it helped relieve his allergy symptoms at their source, but it also builds his immune system up naturally. We've partnered up with Doggy Goo to bring you a special promo code to save $5 off every order of Doggy Goo. Just log on to DoggyGoo.com and use promo code GOO, that's G-O-O, -O, 5, BFF6 and get prepared to see a happy, healthy, beautiful animal.